coming up, backyard modifications to hybrids and EVs. Perhaps the next big thing in aftermarket tuning. And what could possibly go wrong? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. I have to say, you know, this question from a dude whose parents had exquisite taste in child naming, a frequent but not common name, is one of the most fascinating questions that has actually crossed my inbox recently. It's opening the window to the next big thing in well-intentioned backyard disasters. Tell me please, am I dreaming or would it not be feasible to convert a soft hybrid or just hybrid car to a full plug-in hybrid by adding another battery and appropriate connections? Series or parallel, wouldn't that at least double autonomy and offer the option of mains charge? Or would it end up costing as much as a full EV? Full disclosure here, okay, I'm a mechanical engineer, not an electrical one, so there's every possibility that some of the granular detail is gonna elude me. But as I see it, the broad brush strokes of this proposal are these. Hypothetically, yeah, you could do this. Contrary to popular belief, right? Anything is not possible, but this one does exist in the domain of possibility. That, however, does not mean it's a great idea because you're talking about messing around with a great deal of stored energy and the potential for disaster when you do that, it's extremely high. It's a fascinating question though, right? Because as hybrids and EVs become more mainstream, I suspect we're gonna see an explosion hopefully not literally, at least, you know, not all that often, but an explosion nonetheless in aftermarket modifications and kits for the electrical side of electrically motivated vehicles. But the first problem, right, seeing as there's no convenient spare space in the engine bay or in the subfloor area of any car, the additional battery that you fit would have to be installed in the boot where it would be vulnerable to crash damage, which poses an extreme fire risk with batteries or liquid fuels and there's a very good reason we no longer see liquid fuel tanks hanging out behind the rear axle of cars, right? You'd also have to include temperature management for both charging and discharging. And discharging, okay, that just means powertrain use when you use the battery to motivate the powertrain, powering the electric motor and driving the car forward. That's discharge. If you don't do this, the, char the cooling system for all of that, charging and discharging, there's the risk of killing the battery very early and also fire or explosion. If you want to see what happens when you don't cool the battery appropriately, just look at the first generation Nissan Leaf, <laughs> those design chumps. So the cooling system not optional. And obviously in this domain of cooling, liquid cooling is the way you would want to go because it's like an order of magnitude more efficient than air cooling. And this is of course why we no longer cool internal combustion engines in cars using air. Then there's the high voltage wiring and all the technical caveats for the safe installation of that stuff that this imposes on the job and the sundry crap that you're gonna need like a charging system and fittings and all of that, you know, guff. And the battery would have to be custom made from individual cells, which would cost heaps, even as a DIY shoestring project. I suppose you could find yourself a wrecked plug-in hybrid or whatever and salvage many of the bits there, but just to put the battery job in perspective, okay, a 36 volt 5 amp hour battery for Ryobi type electrical power tools for the yard costs 299 bucks at Bunnings. And here's one I prepared earlier. I've always wanted to say. And you know, I'm sure they're marking it up at Bunnings because they're only doing it to make a profit. I mean, aren't we all? But at the same time, Ryobi also benefits from mass production, which drives the price down. This is 180 watt hours of electrical energy. There's a difference between power and energy, right? And energy is what matters. This is 180 watt hours or 0.18 kilowatt hours. Hold that thought, okay? A Hyundai Ionic Hybrid has a 1.56 kilowatt hour 
battery. That's how much electrical energy is stored on board of the Hyundai Ionic Hybrid. That's about nine of these, okay? Nine of these, one standard, not plug-in Ionic Hybrid. And I'm using the Ionic as an example here because the factory hybrid and the plug-in hybrid executions are directly comparable because they're the same car just with different stuff, okay? So you can see what a major car maker has to go through in terms of achieving each different execution, hybrid and plug-in. The plug-in hybrid Ionic, which is the same car, just has the plug-in stuff, has 8.9 kilowatt hours of battery energy. That's about 50 of these, okay? A significant upgrade, I think you'd agree. Five and a half times more battery storage capacity than the straight hybrid, not the plug-in one. So let's just say you intend conservatively to add five kilowatt hours of electrical storage to your standard hybrid donor car. You'd have to find a spot for 30 of these batteries near enough. At the same price per kilowatt hour as this Ryobi battery, that's about 30 times the energy, so 30 times the price, or about 9,000 bucks retail. You could just go and drop nine grand on these and there's your battery. Just for battery like these, off the rack, okay? JCAR Electronics, a electronic retailer here in Shitsville, will sell you 18650 type lithium ion rechargeable battery cells, they're unprotected battery cells, for 12 bucks 45 Australian each as a bulk buy. They're 9.62 watt hour batteries. So you'd need 520 of them for five kilowatt hours, and that's going to cost you about six and a half grand, which is a significant saving. And of course, you'd need to figure out how to wire them all up together robustly and protect them against overcharging and discharging and overheating, which in itself, I think you'd agree, is a serious engineering job and one that you really would not want to get wrong. You'd probably buy the individual cells cheaper from, I don't know, China. And if you do it from scratch, you really do need a spot welder for joining them all up. So, soldering, right? So amateur. And you'd need a laser cut wiring grid cut from, I don't know, stainless steel sheet or something like that, and a bunch of additional components such as a complete heat exchanger setup that works, mechanical damage, containment and closure, uh, protection circuit, thermal overload protection, etc. It's starting to sound like a big job, isn't it? I'd buy a fire extinguisher too if I were you, a big fuck off one. Just look up, look up fuck off fire extinguisher on Google, get one of those. I'm funny like that. It's doubtful to me that you could do this on a shoestring for less than about 20 grand, and that's not including your own time, okay? And bear in mind that you can't just do development of this kind in one hit. You don't go from bright idea to production ready in this kind of complex domain in one iteration, one evolution of the product. You'd need a prototype and then you'd need a second prototype incorporating a bunch of refinements that were basically what you learned from everything you got wrong in prototype number one. And then hopefully, if you're really highly skilled, you'd be kind of production ready the third time around. So uh, make it 30 grand if you want to do this kind of right. And if you can successfully reuse a bunch of the critical components from each of the previous prototype iterations to save a bit of money. At this point, it behooves me to point out that it's cheaper just to go out and buy the plug-in hybrid, which is about six and a half grand extra in the case of the Ionic. I also cannot overstate just how easy it is to hurt yourself badly if you get this wrong. You know, making a mistake so bad. Going from nice idea to patient in the burns unit is a foreseeable pathway for this driveway project to unfold across, right? In choosing the donor car for this project, you would also need to ensure that it could run and provide adequate motive power across a wide range of driving conditions just in EV mode. So bear in mind that, can you hear that? Filthy big helicopter again. I love the fires that have been enveloping Sydney for the past few months. And the smoke, it's just awesome. Living in the pyromaniac's paradise. 
Yes. Where was I? So bear in mind that the iconic iconic ionic plug-in has a 40 damn you helicopter has a 40% more powerful electric motor to facilitate exactly this kind of more energetic EV mode operation, okay? Designing a bigger battery to drive a Mr. Puniverse electric motor in a standard hybrid would be another kind of epic own goal to score going down this track, I'd suggest. So you might need an electric motor upgrade as well, and that's going to be so expensive. You'd also need to be able to hack the donor car's software control architecture so that you avoid unpredictable feedback effects and operational conflicts which are bound to occur with a modification that cuts this deep into the vehicle. I don't know if you saw this thing, okay, but Hyundai recently built this ridiculous big blue Bogan burnout bus, which was an IMAX with the group's big turbo V6 engine in it and an eight-speed auto. One of the biggest parts of this project, which they don't talk about, and which they'll probably hate me for talking about, was solving exactly those kinds of software conflict issues. And they had full plug and play operating system access. And they had all these conflicts, like when we do this, this happens, and this system kicks in, and how do we turn that off, and take away the friggin' number you first thought of. I mean, Jesus, it's complex. So. Your job hot rodding the plug in, right, is going to be very difficult indeed, I'd suggest, without manufacturer support, and you will definitely not get that. Then you have to fail safe the installation, okay? Fail safing, so important. You need to do that so that you don't make the news in some spectacular pyromaniacal fashion, you know, dropping Jimmy and Jemima off to daycare one morning and then <laughs> Mount Vesuvius. If you are successful at the end of this odyssey, hashtag doubtful, the resulting car is also going to be uninsurable. And you can't just not tell your insurer that you've done this because that's kind of a failure of your duty of disclosure. So you will pay the premium, but you'll be uninsured in any case. And this means if you are a full-on electrical engineer with high-level electrical trade skills and you have access to a full-on prototype development workshop with fire suppression and a hard line to the local burns unit, let's not forget, you are not dreaming. Otherwise, you pretty much are. And even if you're not dreaming, it's going to be cost prohibitive and uninsurable. So the only way I see this working, okay, some aftermarket brainiac has to do all of the heavy lifting, overcome all of these hurdles, idiot-proof the whole thing, and develop a kit that you or some competent authorised installer can just jam in to the right hybrid donor car. You'll have to watch this space. I can't see any of those currently available online. They'll just have to get the numbers right, of course, to the extent that you can open your wallet and do the job for less than the cost of a brand new plug-in hybrid off the shelf from a car maker. That is going to be a significant challenge, but I am absolutely certain aftermarket mods to EVs and hybrids are just around the corner. And one thing I can assure you, gonna be interesting.